I thank God that he's given me the privilege to start this awesome series. Reset. How many of us are ready for it? How many of us are ready to reset? You know, when we heard the word, go forward, I'm sure we were very excited. But it is also because the Lord wants us to go forward. That is why he also needs us to reset. When I was 11 or 12, well, we're on our way to school and... Um, we had an accident. We, we, we were involved in an accident. And all I know was one minute I was gisting with my younger sister. And then the next time I saw myself was on a road. A third road. Actually, we had just finished insulting some policemen. That we felt were just harassing our parents for nothing. In fact, after that experience, I was like, supposing I had died at that moment. You know, guilt racked me for a while. But I realized why when I tried to stand, I couldn't. And um, later on, they had to carry me. Later on, I realized that um, I, was, I, was, I couldn't stand on my, on my left leg. Or was it my right? I couldn't stand on them because my hip bone was out of socket. It, it, it went out of place and um, out of alignment. So I, I couldn't stand. How, how many people have experienced a dislocation in any part of the body? Anybody? Any people put your hand like this? Anybody? I, I just want to know I'm not alone. Thank you. Or you've experienced a fracture. Or you know somebody who has. Well, aha. That period of my life was really, I couldn't go to school. I couldn't go out to play. And worse, I couldn't, for me, the whole point of the school wasn't the problem. I couldn't walk. I couldn't put my weight on that leg. And um, at the time, it was advised that I should be taken to a bone setter, a native one. How many of us have gone through that experience? Okay. And, and, and she would pull and stretch, and it, it was just, it, it, was, there was, it was pain. There's a lot of pain involved. And um, apart from the pain, there was the fact that I looked funny. Because when I'll stand, I'll you know, I'll be like that. So I'm trying to walk and I'm, you know, when I start trying to, I mean, this is how I'll, I'll try and move. And of course, I, I couldn't go very far in this style, you know. But that is what happens when things are out of place, out of joints. There is pain. There is abnormal shape or form. Some people, by the time the fracture sets, the, the, especially if you go to the wrong place to get it set, you can't function because the bone is no more in alignment. You know, it's, it's, it's out. So you can't use it for what you're supposed to use it for until it is back in alignment. Some people, you see them, I'm a physiotherapist. I'm a practicing physiotherapist. So this word, this is the way it connects with me. When you see people, you see how beautiful you're all looking. Your form, your shoulders, you wear your dress, it sits well, your suit, everything. You will not appreciate it until one of this goes off. If, if, it, just, if it goes in, it, 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 this, this place just looks flat. Anything that goes out is, is out. And then everything else, the pain is all over. So that is the importance, that is how important it is that we start from resetting. We start from 
getting things back in alignment, we start from reminding ourselves and understanding why it is we do what we do. At the time when I was recovering, and I see this with a lot of patients, so what we do a lot of times with them is, you know, and if you've experienced that with people who are healing, no matter what anybody said to me, I couldn't, they could see the problem faster than me. So there are times you think you are on your right lane. You think you are walking. I mean, for me, I'm moving. Am I not moving? But somebody's like, in fact, my, my mom would just know because for her, she's thinking future. You know, you can't walk like that. You can't walk like that. Your, your hip is this way. For a long time, I didn't know I used to go one-sided. You know, and it took people around me to focus. Sometimes what we do with patients is we have mirrors in the clinic. And so we tell them, Walk, look at yourself. Look at yourself. Nobody can tell you the truth more than what you are seeing. So they, they have to, you know, and I see all, all the English you would have spent how many minutes, you know, trying to get them to see. By the time they're in front of the mirror, it's painful, they are trying, but they are adjusting. It's painful, they are trying, but they are, they are adjusting, you know, because they also know that if we don't correct this, our posture, down the road, when this physiotherapist discharges us, we will come back here for back pain or some other thing that will go wrong. Because if one place is not doing its work, that means the other place will soon start complaining. So it is very, very important for us to set the foundation of what we are about to do today and in the next few weeks. Now, for those of us who may not connect with that, at least most of us have phones. And your phone has the GPS or the map. And if you notice for a map, the ultimate objective a map has is that it is to get you to where? It is to get you to your destination. So no matter how you veer off, it will keep rerouting. It will keep rerouting. I was trying to find a place in Third Avenue, Guarimpa, this week. And the map kept taking me around. And anywhere, because for me, I'm like, okay, I think I know where I'm going. Whichever way I took, the map just kept coming back. It just kept coming back. People of God, I found myself in Efab. I don't know what happened, but I think the map felt its own third avenue, Guarimpa, was in Efab estate. But it just stayed, no, any, anyhow I went, I just, I'll see the whole map just recalibrate. For the map, you have a destination. Even if you get there late, but you must get there. So if you miss it here, let's see what, how we can fix it so that you get to your destination. You achieve the expected end. Let's see Revelations 2, 4 to 5. Is it on the slide? Fantastic. Revelations 2. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent or reset and do the first works or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Unless you repent. That statement may not look, may not look like it affects us until you understand the fact that, yes, Jesus was talking to the church at the time, but there is so much you lose when you are not where you should be. That was a lamp. That was a, imagine the church was represented with a candle and Jesus was saying, if you do not remember to go back to doing your first works as you used to, if you do not reset, if you do not go back to your first love, to the things you used to do, and not just as to things you used to do, but to do them with, under, to serve me the way you're supposed to. He said, I will remove you from that lampstand. That candle will go out. 
that, that fame, the things you used to do that took you to where you are or where you were. Because for some of us, we have veered off. We just don't know how far we've gone yet. But God in his mercy is going to bring us back today in Jesus' name. So sometimes when we, 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 we go off, Jesus is saying, go back. Go back to the things you do, you used to do. Reset so that you do not lose the honor. You do not lose the prosperity. You do not lose the, the glory you used to have. You do not lose the beauty. Some people, you have lost you have lost connections, acquaintances. For somebody, it's your marriage. You've, you've lost certain things. To be able to reset takes a lot of courage. I'm just going to throw that in there. Because it will take you a lot of courage to be able to sit down and appraise yourself. And like the patient looking in the mirror, tell yourself the truth that something is not right. And then to also now say, I need to go back and get things done. First, um, 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5a. Paul, Paul says, I am the International Standard Version. He says, keep examining yourselves to see whether you are continuing in the faith. Test yourself. Test yourself. Keep examining yourself. Keep, keep checking your marriage. Don't, don't think, oh, we've been married for uh, 10 years. Oh, we've been married for how I many? This is how we do it now. Check it. Where are you? Is your spouse okay? Are you happy? Ask yourselves once in a while: Is this where my? Is this what we wanted to be when we got married, like the ten years ago? Or how? Where did all the laughter go? Now it is buy gas, children's school fees. House rent. Let's go to church. Are the children ready? Why are you late? There's no friendship. Where is our friendship gone? As an employer, ask yourself, what's happening? What happened? We used to make this much. No, don't tell yourself, okay, because at least we are still making something. Don't be blind to what is going on in your office. Take time. Examine yourself. Check. What is going on? Are we still on course? Are we still on course? When you're driving, even when you're using the map, yes, it's speaking, you, your eyes are on that map. If there's any shift, you wonder, are we still, is this still taking me to where I want to go? What, am I, what I am doing presently, is it taking me to where I want to go? Because when you ask those questions, then you will real, you'll be able to assess where something has gone wrong. Of course, the first thing is that um, you need to know what it is your expected end is, isn't it? Because if you don't have an expected end, if you do not have a vision, if you don't even know what, what function you are supposed to achieve, if something goes wrong, you, will not, you won't click because you, you're, you're not actually, you weren't going anywhere anyway in the first place. But I know that all of us sitting down here are people of vision. Amen. Amen. Don't fall asleep on me. Now, it's been said that vision leaks and we forget, which is why we have to keep reminding ourselves, which is why the word will keep coming, will keep coming. I, 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 I want to think that there is no message that has never been preached in this whole world since Jesus came. But you know what? The word will still keep being preached. And you know what? We will never say we have gotten to a place of we know it now. We know it all. We, we can't. Because we forget. We actually forget. The, the, the ones of us with the... Your memory is like an elephant. You will still forget. Some things leak out. And like the trauma that causes the bone to be pushed out of alignment... The cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the desire for other things. That's how Jesus talked about them in Mark 4, 18 to 19, when he was talking about the seed. He said, and the distractions of life can push us out of alignment with God's word and instructions, or it can dislocate us. 
He can move us out of the location where we are meant to be with God's word and his instructions. Jesus called them thorns. Thorns that choke life out of the seed. And he said that the seed, he said it was unfruitful. The word was unfruitful to those who heard. It was unfruitful because all those things, the thorns had choked life out of the seed. So to stay on course, to remain on course, because we have a word. We have a word to go forward. And it will be very easy to come. Like we prayed this morning. We have prayed. We are going forward. We are going forward in our business. We are going forward in our, with our children. We are going forward in our, uh, what, what again? In our education, in our academics. We are going forward in that office. But if things are not put in place, that's why we'll also do the word and align ourselves so that we will see that word. We will go forward. We will see fruitfulness in every area of our lives. So, please try to be in church for the next few weeks. Make an appointment to be here every Sunday. Amen. Amen. We are starting with the vision of ILCC. As a church, that is our, that's our mandate. That's, that's the blueprint, the goal that God has given us. Is the vision up there? Okay. So we are going to say this together. We're going to say the vision together. Can everybody see it? Can everyone see it? Jessica, can you see it? Okay, so let's say it together. ILCC is ordained to inspire every man to seek to know God intimately and strive to show him distinctly to his world through the unique gifts within him. Can we say it again? Can we try and close our eyes and say it without looking? The voices are fewer now. <laughs> Let's try. Just try and close your eyes and say it. Hallelujah. Please clap for your neighbor. Well done. Well done. <laughs> now, if you're a member of this church, you need to know this vision because that's why you're here. You have a role to play in making this vision come to pass. Do you see yourself in the vision? Does your own personal vision connect with this vision? Because God doesn't just send you to any house. There's, there's a reason he brought you into this house. There's a, there's a part, a role you have to play for the fulfillment of this vision. And that is why you are here. So the question you need to ask yourself is, how am I, what role am I playing to make sure this vision comes to pass? I don't know, if, can I put up Luke 4? Luke 4, 17 to 21. Can we put it up? Or let's look at it in our Bibles. Luke 4, 17 to 21. And for sake of time, I'm going to read. That was Jesus' mandate. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. That's Jesus when he went to the temple. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book, gave it back to the attendants and sat down. Jesus knew how to create effect. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today, 
this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. That was Jesus' mandate and he was guided by it. He always told the disciples, anything that was, he said, my father sent me, I am here to do the will of my father. Anything that deviated or tried to pull him away from achieving that goal. He was, in fact, he called, he looked at Peter and told him, Satan, get thee behind me. Because his mind was set on fulfilling his mandate. And so it is important for us to keep our vision in mind, even as we go on this journey to reset, as we move forward. Now, the starting point of inspiring every man to know God intimately is to connect them to God. Because if anybody is not connected to God, there can be no intimacy. You can't be intimate with somebody you don't know or you've never met or you've never even heard of. It can't happen. So the first thing that needs resetting today, ILCC, the first place we're starting with is our connecting men to God, our reconciling men to God. Now, as a church, we don't only invite people to Lighthouse and church services when people are given the opportunity to receive Christ, but we also go out to evangelize and we pray. We pray for people to get saved. That is what we are supposed to do. Jesus said, go into the world because the world will not come unless we go to them. We have to go to them. They will not come. We didn't go to God. He came to find us. And so because he came, we have to go. Hallelujah. Now, ILCC is not... She's not a church that does evangelism. For her to be... To disciple people. And that's one thing we believe we've been called to do. Make disciples of men. Not just to... We don't just want members... It's nice to have members. It's beautiful. But we've been called to make disciples. So that is why you always hear us talking about leadership. We always hear us talking about being a lighthouse. Serve. What are you doing in church? So for ILCC to be a church like that, she must be an evangelizing church. She must be a church that connects men to Jesus. And that is a constant for us. Evangelism for us is not just a program on the calendar. It is every, every program that we do is geared towards evangelism. It's geared towards bringing men to Christ. Everything that I, every, just think of anything. Think about anything that we do as a church. Even if it, whether it's, it's, it's the women's group or the men's group or the singles or the, the lighthouse, every single thing is geared towards bringing men, inspiring men to know God and to know him intimately for themselves. That is the reason we were ordained. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So turning men to God, saving them, delivering them from oppression, translating them from death to life. That was why Jesus was born he was crucified and resurrected. And this objective, this ministry, this mandate was so important to him that even when he could have gone, he was resurrected. He still came back. He still came back. That scripture, Acts 1, 1 to 3, that's where we'll see that Jesus stayed back for 40 days teaching the disciples again. He stayed back teaching them. He stayed back reminding them of the things he had told them the holy spirit was to come but if jesus had gone though had just taken off the way the disciples were they were not ready to receive the holy spirit he wouldn't have been able to come i mean peter had gone back to fishing and once peter said he was going fishing other people followed him so Jesus knew he had work to do. He scolded them, of course, but he didn't just scold them that, why didn't you believe me? No, he understood that something shook them out of alignment. Something, his death shook them out of alignment. He made them forget who they were. 
There are some of us, some things we go through, you, 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 it's like all the scriptures fly out of your mind. You, you find yourself in some situations and there are choices you need to make and, and you, it's like you, you forget you're a Christian at that point. Some of us have suffered losses that we almost feel like, what, what is it? As in, you, you drop the Bible. Prayer is even... Who is talking about prayer? Because you are like, God, how can you do... You forget. You just forget. You are dislocated. You are out of joint. The apostles that we celebrate so much, they also went through this. And Jesus understood. And that is why we are here now. Because he knows that from time to time, he knows that we need to be in alignment. He knows that for us to enjoy certain benefits, for us to enjoy the promise that is at the end of the word he has given to us, we need to be in alignment. We need to reset. We need to get, get ourselves back in shape and get ourselves together. And that is why he, this word is coming today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So as a church, one of the things we do, like I said, is we go out for evangelism. We also, this is outside of the personal evangelism we do, talking to people about God around us. We also go out, and this Saturday, 23rd of July, we'll be going out again. And we'll be meeting as a group in, um, there'll be a designated area. The designated area for this Saturday is uh, Jabi, Jabi Lake. Jabi Lake. By 6.30 a.m. By 6.30 a.m. So we are going to come out in our um, workout clothes. In our joggers. In our, please don't wear suits. Nobody is wearing suits. Don't wear dress. Don't tie wrapper. Don't tie wrapper. Please. And don't tie. Don't Well, unless if maybe when you walk out, you tie your head or something. But just come out in your, you know, um, what do you call those things? Jeans. Your, whatever you wear for, for exercises, please, and look decent. And we'll all meet there by 6.30 a.m. We're going to pray. You won't be alone. You're not going to go do this alone. We're going to be in, in twos, group of twos. We're going to go out. We're going to, we, we'll have um, tracts. We'll have flyers with testimonies. Yeah, Abuja, behold your God. There's, there's a, um, the flip side has testimonies of what God is doing. And we'll share this out with people. We'll pray with them. We'll talk to them about Christ and get them saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of us have never been a part of anything like this. And so I charge you and beseech you in the name of the Lord. Sister Joy, I know you'll be there with me. And so that you'll be there on Saturday. Sister Joy, you're not traveling. We'll be there on Saturday. First thing, there's a wedding that Saturday. So imagine the beauty of coming out, getting people saved, then going back, changing into your nice clothes, and going for a wedding. So you're, you're, just, you're just reflecting Christ all over. It's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great day. And so we're going to pray. We're going to fast from Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Because we know that, uh, like Pastor Joel told us, the, the devil is not ready to let people go. He's not ready to let people go just like that. So you, you need to be a stronger man, to bind a strong man, to be able to collect his goods. You need to be a stronger man. And so we will be praying that day. Those in the Thursday Lighthouse, you will still have your Lighthouse, but you'll join us on Mixler. So on Wednesday, we'll be here for Emerge Service. Then we will have, uh, we'll be praying on Mixla on Thursday and um, on Friday as well before we go out. So we go out in the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. There's a quote Pastor has. He says, it is sad that today when men need God the most, that is when they have moved the furthest from him. When they need him the most, when we need him the most, when everywhere is also dark. People are going through stuff. You are sitting here. You are going through stuff. But you know what? You have the word. You have hope. You know who Christ is. There are people out there who do not know him. Who do not know they have 
there is, there's an alternative. They do not know there is somebody who loves them. They are harassed. They are broken. They are oppressed. They are harassed. There are some people that can't sleep until they take on, if they don't take drugs, they can't sleep. Some are afraid of even shutting their eyes because there's, there's a constant torment that if you close your eyes, you may not wake up. Some have gone through traumatic experiences that have left them broken. Some can't get past a, a, the death of a loved one. Some, have, some women have experienced rape and they're like, my life can't go forward. They're they just stuck. They're just, they just there. It's even worse for men who can't even talk. Because men get raped too, just that they don't speak. People, people go through... If you take the spirit of God away from a man, he is practically an animal. The devil can use him to do, and, and make no mistake about it, the devil hates you. The devil hates man. He eats, if, if you understand hate, he, just like God is love personified, the devil is hate personified. The Bible says that he is the father of lies. There is no truth in him. So, and then he's now the prince of this world. Your only safety, the only safety a man has is in Christ. And it is not fair that we do not go out to tell them. It is not fair that you have a co-worker or you have a friend and you can see what they are going through, but you are too ashamed to share the solution. You can't even say, let me pray with you. Maybe for what you can get from them, I don't know. But you have what they need. It's in your hands. At least offer it. If they say no, you have done your part. But you don't even stop. Because you love them, you keep going. You keep going. In the book of Ezekiel, he had um, 37, just um, the value of dry bones. And that's how some people's lives are, just dry. Bones, dry bones. Ezekiel told God, he said they are very dry, very dry, unproductive. Nothing is happening. Hopeless, hopeless in a dark place. And the Lord told him to prophesy, which is basically speak the word. Speak the word. Speak the word. And as they heard, as they heard, as they heard, he says life came. Bone began to come to bone. God started to reset. God started to put in place. God started to put things in alignment. And by the time God was done, he said they stood a mighty army. A mighty army. Who knows if that man you are going to speak to is meant to be in a position where God can God needs somebody there to make a decision that would change the lives of many. Like a Peter that became a, a, practically like a rock, a leader in the, in the church after Jesus left. Who knows whether that woman you're talking to, you're going to talk to, is, is actually battling with suicide because she's just gone through one crazy divorce. Who knows whether that teenager you're going to meet is somebody that has lost hope, lost, can't see, doesn't see any hope because she's, she's, she's been, in fact, she's like, look, the only thing I'm good for now is for people to sleep with me. Meanwhile, that is a preacher. That young lady is a preacher going somewhere to happen, to change lives. Who knows? Whether that teenager you are preaching to is the person that will marry your daughter. So, connecting men to God, inspiring men to know Him, going out, sharing your faith, it's not something we have an option over. You can pray about we, we pray for our country. Lord, bind them, bind them, 
bind them here, bind them there. We can bind or we can, we can cast them down, throw them out, kill them. But you know what? Jesus still expects you to minister to them. Jesus still expects you to pray for their salvation. Can you imagine what will happen if in a camp of kidnappers, hey, think with me, in a camp of kidnappers, one of them just has a vision of a warring angel standing there. Can you imagine what will happen? There was a story like that in the Bible. And Elisha told God that, okay, please open his eyes. The guy opened his eyes and saw that there was an army, a heavenly army greater than what he could see, the enemies he could see. Imagine what will happen if people who are stealing, robbing, if the young men who don't have jobs, if they begin to get saved and they are the ones preaching the gospel. Can you imagine what kind of society we'll have? It's like you guys don't even see it. Because I'm seeing some people's face and it just looks blank. You, don't, you think it's impossible? You think it's impossible? It's possible because I see you sit here. And wherever you are, you are a light for Christ. Wherever you are, you are a channel through whom God is doing things right in that place. You don't have to wait until you are the president. No. But where you are, God needs somebody. And you are it. Wherever you go to, God needs somebody. And you are his voice. If you shut up, who else should he speak through? Why has he given you a knack to be able to have friends? And then brought you to the knowledge of who he is. So that through you, he can reach those people. There are people you can reach. I will never be able, nothing will bring me near them unless you, man, will carry me. So the devil is actively, strategically pulling people. And believers who have the power, who have the answer, who have the anointing, who have the anointing, are running away. Let us not get to a point where we, even if you begin to cry, oh, come Lord Jesus, you will stay here and suffer the suffer. Because even for him to come, we need to spread the word. We need to take the gospel out. The whole world needs to come to the knowledge of Christ. Then he can come. Then we can go home and finally rest. But if we are not doing our part, how then did this happen? I will read Luke 4 again. Because this is our mandate. This is our mandate. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives. And recovery of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. I'd like for us to read that scripture. Everyone, please open to Luke 4. We'll read verses 18 and 19. This is who you are. This is how God sees you. And wherever you, put, you see me, put your name there. The Bible in 2 Corinthians says, it says that he has, let me, let me get the scripture. I want to get the scripture right. In 2 Corinthians 5, 18 to 19, that ministry of reconciliation has been given to us. Jesus gave it over to us. He started with the disciples and now he has come to us. He had to make sure they got it because it had to go down generations. We will also teach our children and hand the same mandate to them. Are we at Luke 4? Let us read it and put your name right there. The Spirit of the Lord is upon Udrak because he has anointed Udrak to preach the gospel to the poor. Am I the only one reading to myself? Okay. Verse 
16. Let's read. The Spirit of the Lord is upon Idras because he has anointed Idras to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent Udrak to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. God forbid that the anointing of the Lord that is upon you will be a waste. God forbid that your, the anointing of the Lord will be upon you and you will see people oppressed you will see people in captivity you will see people who you know are blind and you will do nothing you have not been asked to go to the cross Christ gave his all he gave his all because he knew that was the only thing that could save us all he's asking us to do is, as I have saved you, go save others. As I have called you, go call others. As I have revealed myself to you, reveal me to others. Let them enjoy my peace. Let them enjoy my salvation. Let them receive answers to questions that are boggling them and holding them down. Let them know the joy of the Lord that can give them strength to face the enemy. Let them know that the, the devil has been defeated. Let them know that the enemy, the works of the enemy has been destroyed. Let them have hope. Let them have faith in me. Christ is saying we should go out. He's saying we should go out. There are people that need help. There are people that need saving. There are people that need to know what it means to not be afraid. To be honest, and I'm not trying to scare anybody because these are things, these are truths I have said to myself. I have seen money come and go. I have seen fortunes change like this. I have seen people that we thought we would go and celebrate our 50th somewhere. They are not here. I'm still here. I have seen sickness reduce people to... to look, this, this thing is nothing. It's nothing. And sometimes the, in examining ourselves, in testing ourselves, in speaking to ourselves, these are some of the things we need to remind ourselves, that this flesh is just a house. It's nothing. And yet we are so bothered about it. We are, we are, it, it, this is what guides us, not the instruction God has given in our spirits. I beseech you, people of God, let us reset. Let us reset. Let us, let us come back. I'm supposed to give you benefits. You know, we always like to know benefits. What's in it for me? What is in it for me? Why should I go and... Left to me alone, the only benefit I will say is, you better tell people about Christ. Or else the demon that is in them will come and worry you. If you will not tell them the truth, if you will not let them get saved, they will persecute you. And it's already happening. Every time I pray for Northern Nigeria, thank you, Brother Deberry. Every time I pray for Northern Nigeria, I, I tell God sorry. Because I also wonder, when was the last time I supported a missionary there? I can't go, but who is there preaching? How many of us even think about it? We just say, let them not come to Abuja. Let them not come. Let them not come. Who is ministering? Christ does not want them to perish either. He doesn't. He wants them saved. It's to his advantage. He, he created them. He created them. I, I'm a parent. You will not want to see your child suffer. Or else you are a wicked parent. You do everything to save that child. And that is what God is doing. 
And we are his co-laborers. We are meant to help him do that. We can't come and do what he has given us the power he has anointed us to do. So I beg you, I beg you, get your mind in the game. Get your heart in the game. Remember who you are. Like he said, go back to the first walks that you used to do. Hallelujah. Benefit number one. I will run through it. You can put it down and please read the scriptures. He even promised us answers to prayer. That's in John 15, 16. He says that when our fruits abide, he said, ask my father anything, blank check, anything you want. Number two, you make God happy by saving a soul from death. Let me read, um, I'll quickly read James 5. Where are my scriptures? 2 Peter 3, 9 says that, um, 2 3, um, that's B. He says that he is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Then James 5, 20. I'll do 19. Brethren, if any one among you wanders from the truth and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. You are saving somebody from death and you've covered a multitude of sins. If that is the only reason to go out there and save somebody from sure death, it is enough. You add to the growth of the church. You populate God's kingdom. The more people who get saved, the more godly homes we have. The more godly marriages we have. The more of, of, of um, godly policy makers we have. The more godly employees we have. The more godly families and businessmen we have. We have already said that we are here, the, number, the fourth one, to destroy the works of the devil. When we go out to minister to people, people sitting in darkness, a light, the light of God comes into their lives. We destroy the works of the devil. And then number five, you are wise for connecting men to God and you will shine as stars forever. God will honor and celebrate you like the true celebrity that you are when you lead men to Christ. Some people struggle for social media following, likes, and all of that. And the question we should ask ourselves is, all those people you keep following and following, where are you following them to? Who is following you? The people following you, we need to get people to follow us too, so we lead them to truth. We lead them to life. We lead them to freedom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you are all born connectors today. That is who you are. That is who you are. And from today, before even that Saturday, from today, God will begin to use you. He will lead you to certain valleys with dry bones. And he will use you to prophesy. The words from your mouth will begin to bring life to somebody, to bring salvation to somebody. And people are going to get saved. We are his only option. If we don't go, he can't come down again. He's done his part. He's done his part. It is now left to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I really just want to pray. Time has gone. I know. But I, I just want to plead with us. I want us to take for once. Okay, maybe not for once. But just put, put yourself in the shoes of somebody who does not have Christ. Who can't pray like you pray. Who can't run to a pastor. Who just does bravado and says all manner of things. They use alcohol to just cover up so many things. A lot of them are sick. A lot of them are afraid. But they are pretending. You have this Holy Spirit. 
you have the spirit of discernment. He can open your eyes to see what they are covering. And he also has anointed you to be able to set them free. So I pray that when he calls you for every opportunity that he presents to you, that you will stand for him. You will free the oppressed. That you will heal somebody of a broken heart. That you will deliver somebody from death and bring them to life. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. I want us to pray. I want us to pray. I want us to first of all commit our hearts to God and just, just tell the Lord that I surrender. Just say to him, Lord, I surrender. I surrender. I surrender to your word. I surrender to you. Say to the Lord that wherever he sends you will go. It's a prayer of commitment. Say to him that you will fulfill his agenda upon the earth. Say to him that all he has given to you, you will use to his glory. In the Lara Dabo Soto, your brain a ketada, and the de de Caradabo Soto, your brain a cala de Daboru, Cosetaya Bratali, in the de Sarabo Shanda. Edere de Banai, Caradabo Soto, ye a preneceda, and the Lali Emono Satayamanda, the Dabo Soto, your Britana, Asilea Brosata. Go back to do the things you used to do. Begin with spending time. Spend time with me. The Lord is saying, spend time with me. Come back to me. Come back to me for my blueprints for your life. You have veered off. Come back to me. And I will show you where you are meant to be. And I will move you forward to where you are meant to be. Come back to me. Come back to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I commit your people to you. Lord, as a church, we say that if you need anyone, anywhere, we are here and we are willing. If you're looking for a voice, if you're looking for a hand to help, feet to go, we are here and we are willing. All that you have given to us, we yield to you. Every resource, our time, this house, this body, our cars, our monies, our influences, our connections. Lord, we yield to you in the name of Jesus. We declare that every valley of dry bones around us, we speak life in the name of Jesus. I declare that everyone who has come into this place will not go out the way they came. In the name of Jesus. Thank you because you have already gone ahead of us into Saturday. Lord, I know that for some of us, starting from today, you are already bringing people our way. Thank you because Abuja will behold her God in this week. In the name of Jesus. We give you glory, Lord. We praise you. For in Jesus' precious name we pray.